Welcome to my video review of Ubuntu 13.10. Now for the first time in Ubuntu, we now have a choice between a phone operating system and a desktop operating system. So in this video, I'll actually be reviewing the desktop operating system. A few months ago, Canonical caused a bit of a controversy when they announced that they were changing Display Manager from Xorg to Mir. This was to be a combined mobile and desktop approach for a Display Manager, and their intention seemed good. But as it's turned out, there hasn't been the backing from graphics card companies from like Intel and Nvidia. So Ubuntu 13.10 was supposed to be a transition period where we were to have Xmir, but all we have in this release, so for the, well for the desktop, is the traditional Xorg. The mobile operating system does come with the Xmir. So in the long term, within the next release, Ubuntu 14.04, they were scheduled to do the full Mir desktop but I'm not sure whether that will actually continue. We'll wait and see. Anyway, other notable changes we have is a dramatic speed improvement. Now I thought Ubuntu 13.04 was pretty good. It was a bit quicker than Ubuntu 12.04, but they've actually got even quicker than they were. So that's pretty good. The kernel has been uplifted to 3.11. And this is a big improvement than the, oh, the kernel that they came with in Ubuntu 13.04 was rubbish and I pretty much got rid of it on the first day. So yeah, I've had no trouble at all with this latest kernel. Uh, there's been the introduction of the Smart Scopes searcher in Unity, where you've got a whole range of searches that can be done within the Unity launcher. Now there's good and bad sides to that, and we'll review that more later in the video. There's a new installer added to the system. We've got the Click Installer. So this is supposed to resolve all the dependencies for installing a program. So whereas the Ubuntu traditionally has, and still has, the Debian package installer, which can clash a bit with dependencies, this new click installer is supposed to have all dependencies built in with the single package, so it should make it a lot easier to install applications. And lastly, there is a keyboard selector in the taskbar. Anyway, let's take a more thorough look at the system. The layout of Ubuntu is once again consistent as with previous releases. So on the left hand side you have the Unity bar which is stuck in place. We can have shortcuts for various applications. On the top left you've got the Unity launcher with a few different lenses and quite a few smart scopes. And on the top right we have this new keyboard selector which I don't particularly like so I shall just get rid of that. So go down to text entry settings and then untick show current input source in the menu bar. Also in the menu bar we have the network icon, the chat availability and email menu, volume control and audio player control, time and date with calendar and the shutdown menu. The shutdown icons are once again have this nice transparency effect. The behaviour of the Unity launcher is very much improved from before, so when you're actually after an application, the search is quite quick to respond. Then there's a pause and it comes up with online results. So it's picking online results from these various sources, and these are the smart scopes. So I can just scroll down here and think what my after um, references. So actually I could put something different in there, just put the name of a city that's near me. And you can see we've got weather results, information, references, it's the Wikipedia references, so I can just click that. Uh, Borough of Swindon. Well, it's just an image here. Um, what have we got if I actually click on view? And it takes to a shortcut in Wikipedia. There's absolutely loads you could do with the smart scopes. If you don't want all those launchers there, you can go into the application lens, click on dash plugins, click on the individual applications there, and then click disable. If you want to remove them all entirely, then you've got security and privacy, go across the search and then remove all the online searching. Now that's my favourite option because I do have some concerns with privacy with these smart scopes in that they are sending a lot of information to canonical servers. So without the web service enabled, just searching for an application will only bring, it, will only bring up the applications. It has some good intentions with the smart scopes. Now also along the theme of privacy, under the diagnostic, where it's sending error reports to Canonical, you can see all the previous reports that you've sent. Now this is publicly available information. Now although I can't query that further because I don't have sufficient permissions, 
it says there, sorry, you're not a member of a group that is allowed to see data from error reports. I'm still concerned that all that information is publicly available. Privacy issue is the major downside of this operating system. If it wasn't for that, you know, I would be more than happy with this. It is very speedy and responsive, and the smart scopes could be a really good idea. Despite its speed, it's not actually particularly light. Already we're clocking in at over 500 meg of RAM in use. It's a pity that, but hey, what am I worried about? I've got 16 gig of RAM on my full system, so 500 meg in use, yeah, that's nothing much at all. Installation of software can be done through the Ubuntu Software Center. Now notice this is running quite a bit quicker than before. The opening time is very much improved from previous releases. But you can also install applications from the Synaptic Package Manager or through the terminal. You still got the application ratings and reviews. That's all good. So I could just go and install VLC to show it's working. And you get a nice little animation on the Unity launcher. So I'll just minimize that and carry on with the review. The choices of lens that we have in Unity are the applications, files and folders, videos, music. That's just my locally installed music because I've disabled the online searching now. Photos and social networking. So that's linked up to my Twitter account. I'll take a look at what applications we have installed. Let's just filter this down to certain results. So under accessibility, yeah, nothing worth mentioning. Accessories, yeah, it's just the usual assortment of accessories we can expect to see. Oh, and that's a shortcut to Nautilus File Manager. They seem to have done a bit of a better job on there. You also have options for connecting to server and browsing the network on the left-hand side. So that's quite a bit nicer from them before. Anyway, back to the applications that we have. There won't be anything under customization. I'm not worried about dash plugins, developer or education, fonts, right, games. Just got four basic games on there. Graphics, nothing really worth mentioning. Internet, we have Firefox for the web browser. I've installed Google Chrome, just messing around to see if it installed. We have Thunderbird for the email client. And Wireshark I installed while I was testing out the privacy. Media, we have Rhythmbox for the music player and Totem for the video player. Clementine and VLC I installed, just to test out the system. Office, we have partial suite of LibreOffice, which comes with Calc, Draw, Impress and Writer. Here's what I thought of Ubuntu 13.10, Well, it's good that the speed and stability have now been improved. And I suppose in a way it's good as well that Canonical are branching out into the mobile phone market, which could be lucrative for them, and finally generate some more money. But the downsides with this distro, I have severe concerns with privacy, and in fact when I come to use this distro, maybe for a month or two's time, I will actually be removing the smart scopes, well the online version of the smart, the online searcher from smart scopes, and disabling the crash reports. And another downside there is the shorter support time of this release, that it's only until July 2014. However, this does take us nicely to the long term support release of Ubuntu 14.04, which will be out in April 2014. So overall, I have given this distro 75%. I really found it difficult to decide what score to give it because I didn't know how much to penalise them for the privacy concerns. Otherwise, if it hadn't been for that, I probably would have rated it around 85%. But thanks for watching. See you all later.